Hey, what's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a first look at the all new Odroid C4. Now in this video, I will be running Android on this board. We're going to do a bunch of tests with this thing. We'll run some benchmarks, test some video playback, some native Android games, and some emulators. And one of the big reasons I always do Android first is because this chip has been out for a while and it's established with Android. And it'll give us a good baseline on how this board's gonna perform. Now there are other operating systems available for this, like Ubuntu 20.04, but audio's not working, the GPU acceleration's not working, and overall, this always happens with a newly released single board computer. But there are a lot of awesome developers working on Linux distributions for this board, like Manjaro, Armbian, and Ubuntu 20.04. And as soon as we get something that's working pretty well, I will be doing a couple more videos. So this board doesn't come with any onboard storage, just like the Raspberry Pi. You can use a micro SD card or an eMMC module. I opted to pick up a 16 gigabyte module here to install Android on, but you could always run it from an SD. Keep in mind, this eMMC is gonna be much faster. As for powering the board, they claim five volts all the way up to 15.4, but I'm gonna be using a 12 volt two amp power supply that I had laying around with a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack. That's how we're gonna power this board. You probably have something like this laying around, but you can always purchase the power supply from Odroid. So I'm super excited to get into some testing, but first up, I kind of wanted to go over the specs and just the overlay of the board itself. So over here on this side, we have a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack. Like I mentioned, five volts all the way up to 15.4 will power this unit. We also have a micro USB 2.0 OTG port and our full size HDMI 2.0. This will do 4K 60 out. We also have four USB 3.0 ports and gigabit ethernet. Unfortunately, Odroid left out Bluetooth and Wi-Fi again, so if you want wireless connectivity, you will have to use a USB adapter. It does come with the heatsink pre-installed, and so far it's been doing a pretty good job. We have 40 GPIO pins, just like the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, or 4, and we also get an IR receiver so we can use this as a media center and use an IR remote for the board itself. Adding storage is simple enough. On the bottom here, we have our eMMC connector and our micro SD card slot. So as you can see, the Odroid C4 is exactly the same size as the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or the Raspberry Pi 4. It would be possible to use a Raspberry Pi 3 case with this with some modification. Now I was thinking about doing that down the road, but they do offer a pretty cheap plastic case on their website for the C4 already. It's really up to you. As specs go, it's looking pretty good so far. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S905X3. This is a 12 nanometer chip, quad core Cortex A55 at two gigahertz. Hopefully down the road, we can get a little bit of an overclock because they have seen these running at 2.3 in the wild. The GPU is the Mali G31 MP2 with four execution engines running at 650 megahertz. Four gigabytes of LPDDR4 running in quad channel at 2133 megahertz. Moving over to I.O., we have one HDMI 2.0 port, it'll do 4K 60, four USB 3.0 ports, one micro USB 2.0 OTG adapter, a 40-pin GPIO layout, just like the Raspberry Pi, and one UART port. So I mentioned this already, but it's very important. This doesn't come with any storage, and I would recommend using an eMMC module. It's just going to be much faster than any other micro SD card. But if you have to use a micro SD card, this does support up to UHS-1 SDR-104. As for connectivity, Gigabit Ethernet, IR receiver, no Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, you'll have to use a USB adapter, and finally, operating systems. As of making this video, which is pretty early for this board, we have Ubuntu 20.04. There's a minimal image that you can install the GNOME desktop with, but there's no audio or hardware acceleration. Android is working great out of the box. It's Android 9.0, but Android 10 is coming mid-May. Armbian has already released a tester image, so has CoreElect, and Manjaro is working on one right now, but this list will grow down the road. I will leave a link to the Odroid C4 wiki page so you can see what's available. You can also check their forum out. So I'm going to be running Android on the Odroid C4. There are a few different ROMs available. We have AOSP, Android 9.0 Pi, and Android TV, but I'm a big fan of Vodic's work. And if you've messed around with any Odroid board and Android, you know who Vodic is. He's an awesome Android developer over on the Odroid forum, and he's already ported Lineage OS 16 to the C4. Everything here is working great. I've already installed it to the eMMC. I've got Google Play up and running. It does support Vulkan right out of the box, and this is the one that I'm going to be going with in this video. But performance should be pretty much exactly the same as AOSP. So with all that out of the way, let's move over to the Odroid C4 and see how this thing performs. All right, so here we are with Lineage OS 16. This is based on Android Pi, and one of the reasons I chose this over the Android TV version 
was the Google Play Store. I have access to the full Google Play Store. And if I would have installed the Android TV version, I would have been stuck with the Android TV store, which doesn't have a lot of the apps I wanted to test. I'm connected over Ethernet. If we head over here, we do have Odroid settings. So from within here, we can update if we ever want to update. CPU, I've set it to the max of two gigahertz with the performance governor. Rotation, display, I think I'm set at, yeah, 1080p, 60. Uh, HDMI sec, playback settings. We also can mess around with the LED. I've just had it set to heartbeat. But overall, this has been working really well. And as you can see, I've installed a lot of stuff here. So first up, let's open up Ida64. Just give you a look here. We got the Odroid C4, four gigs of RAM. For the CPU, we have that quad core AM Logic S905 X3 at two gigahertz, A55. And the GPU is the Mali G31. Android 9 with a security patch from April 2020, which is really good. It's a lot better than some of the tablets I've tested on my channel. So the first thing I wanted to get into was some benchmarks. We'll go with Geekbench 5. I've already run these benchmarks that we're going to take a look at in this video. We'll go to History. Single Core, 178. Multi, 604. Definitely on the lower end side when we're looking at this as an Android device and comparing it to Android phones, even prepaid phones. But overall, with this low-powered single board computer using Geekbench 5, it's really not all that bad. I wish we could have scored up in the thousands here, but we're at 604, so we're a little ways off from that. Next on the list, we have 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme OpenGL ES 3.1, 340, and it does support Vulkan, as you can see here. It finished the Vulkan with 347. Still very low when you're comparing it to real Android devices. Finally, for the Android benchmarks, we have Antutu. I just had to take a screenshot because it turns the screen sideways when you run this on single board computers. Overall score, 92,488, 35,000 on the CPU, 10,000 on the GPU. This is actually getting pretty close to some of the prepaid $100 Android phones that I've tested on my channel. Now, I do wish we would have got a better GPU score here, but after all, these are benchmarks and benchmarks are benchmarks. Let's get into some real world performance. First up, let's test some video streaming and some native video playback. So first up, we'll do a YouTube test. I wanna make sure we're sitting at 1080p, 60. Looks good there. Full screen it. Super smooth. Great audio, 1080p 60 on a device like this is going to be no issue at all. Next up, we got some Netflix playback. Now keep in mind, we're working with a phone or a tablet version of Netflix. This is not a 4K version here. But with standard definition video, Netflix looks pretty decent and it's going to play just fine. And finally, let's try out Disney+. Plus. Again, we're working with the phone version, so we're not going to get that 4K HDR out of Disney+, Plus or Netflix. But it should work pretty well here. Yeah, let's go ahead and buffer through a little bit. And this is perfectly watchable. Okay, so I have two 4K 60fps demos here. We'll go with the first one. Let's move over to the next one. This one has always given me trouble, and I got a feeling we're going to have trouble here also. So video isn't the smoothest, but I've tested this so many times I can tell you that the sound is off, and that's one of the main issues I run into with these single board computers and this video. 4K 60fps MP4. And no matter what video player I use, this always happens. Now it's time to move over to some Android gaming. First up, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition. I'm using the beta version, so we do have the FPS on screen, and I'd say we're getting an average of around 33 to 34 FPS with this. And I'm sure if you drop the resolution down to 720p and the chunks down, you could get better than this, but I'd say 30 FPS is playable with Minecraft. Next up, we have GTA San Andreas from the Google Play Store, and this actually feels really playable. I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over USB. If you had a Bluetooth adapter, you could connect it to Bluetooth. Hey. 
And finally, Real Racing 3. Controllers work with this, and this is a very well optimized game. I've been able to play this on super low end devices. It's looking pretty decent here. I mean, I don't notice any frame stutters or anything like that. I wish the resolution would up a little bit, but it does detect that we're running on a low end CPU. But in the end, Real Racing 3 is totally playable on the Ojoid C4. Moving over to my favorite part about these videos, some emulation testing. Now I will have a full emulation test coming up on this board. There's a ton of stuff that I know you guys want to see, but first up we have PSP. I'm using the PPSSPP emulator, Vulcan back in, 2x resolution, no hacks with Kingdom Hearts, full speed. Same goes for Tekken 6, 2x resolution, no hacks, performance is great. But when we move up to the harder to emulate games, like God of War, we're going to run into some issues. So here's God of War Chains of Olympus. I had to go down to 1x resolution, turn all the hacks on, spline set to low, and I had to turn frame skip on. Now this is just one of those games that's hard to emulate on low end devices. And even with that frame skip on, we're still not getting a constant 30. Now this originally ran at 60 FPS. When we set frame skip to 1, it should just half it to 30. But we can't even hit 30 with Chains of Olympus. Now this is the Vulcan back end. I also tested OpenGL and it was a little bit worse, not by much, but it was noticeable. I've had amazing luck with Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator on this board. I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960 and I'm getting full speed in everything that I tested. Here's one more for Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. It's working amazingly on the C4. And finally, for the emulation section of this video at least, we have some N64 emulation using Mupin 64 FZ. Performance here is great. Now I know this is an easier one to emulate. This is Diddy Kong Racing, so let's take it up a notch. GoldenEye 007 performs reasonably well, and I didn't have to drop the resolution down, but we didn't upscale either. So I'm at 640 by 480, which is still very playable, and it still looks great. Seeing how 007 performed really well, I figured we'd go ahead and test out Conker's Bad Fur Day. 640, 480, we're getting around 20 FPS, which this originally ran at 20 FPS on the original N64 hardware, but overall I'm still pretty impressed here, given that this is a first release of Android for the C4 and we're seeing this kind of performance. So far, I'm really impressed with the Odroid C4, given that it's such a low-powered unit, and we're going to get into that right now. I have a kilowatt meter connected to the wall, and I have this connected to the power supply. This is total board power consumption from the wall. I did set the CPU governor to interactive to run these tests here. At idle, 2.7 watts. Streaming 1080p video from YouTube, 4.3 and my extreme stress test, which maxes out all four cores on this CPU, we only pulled 5.8 watts from the wall. And with the included heat sink, heat wasn't an issue whatsoever. Now they do have this set to thermal throttle at 75 degrees Celsius, but at idle we were at 48. Streaming 1080p video from YouTube after five minutes, we did jump up to 55. And after a 10 minute stress test, we only reached 68 degrees Celsius. Remember, this will thermal throttle at 75. At least that's how they have it set up for Linux distros. I'm pretty sure it's the same for Android. But I have to say, this does seem more power efficient than the Raspberry Pi 4. And we're not dealing with so much heat here, given that we do have an included heat sink. So for a $50 board, I think this is doing a great job. So there you have it, the new Odroid C4 running Android. It's totally usable right now. You could set this up as a little media set top box. I do want to test out Android TV, I'm not sure if I'm going to make a video on it or not, but I'm really excited about some Linux distros for this thing. Mainly Manjaro and Ubuntu running the GNOME desktop. So as soon as I get some of those driver issues fixed, I will have more videos coming. I just kind of didn't want to show it off in the state it's in right now, but Android is fully functional like you just saw. But that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I got more coming with this board. If you have any questions or you want to see anything running on the Odroid C4, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.